ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نعم by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are able to <coughs> inshallah ta'ala to do a brief reminder because Ramadan the month of Ramadan uh, is fastly approaching and we want to give a brief reminder on what is the importance of the month itself Ramadan as well as the legislation of al-siyam fasting in the month of Ramadan so it's pretty much like a, a elementary or a preliminary to understanding the purpose behind uh fasting within the month of Ramadan all right uh there is a beautiful statement that Ibn Rajab rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi he mentions he says tuba liman aslaha nafsahu qabla ramadan uh yani qabla shahr ramadan um in this tremendous statement of imam ibn rajab right rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi he says tuba and for those who are familiar with the narrations of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you will hear this word being a lot Tuba and the scholars of Hadith, they explain that Tuba have different meanings. Some say that it's a tree in paradise, no doubt. Um, and he says, Tuba, yani, to the one who rectifies himself, who corrects himself or herself uh, before Ramadan. And here he means before the month of Ramadan, okay? Who prepares themselves, who make the necessary preparation, who redeem themselves, yani, because they want to now enter the month of Ramadan in a state of uh, repentance, in a state of reflection, in a state of turning back to Allah Jalla wa'ala. So you want to prepare yourself in the best possible way you can. So he says, Tuba, yani, may they receive this beautiful reward, yani, for the one who is intelligent enough to correct themselves before Ramadan. Unfortunately, the month of Ramadan is fastly approaching and it's relatively short, but a lot of us have not made the necessary preparation for the month. So it's going to be shocking that there are going to be people who are going to be alive, present during the month of Ramadan, but not present in the month of Ramadan. In other words, they're going to be alive during the month of Ramadan, but not taking advantage of the month of Ramadan, as we are aware of that beautiful narration of the Prophet ﷺ, when the Prophet ﷺ was ascending or descending down from the minbar, and each time he took a step down, he said, Amin, and he informed the companions that was Jibril alayhi salam making dua. And one of the duas or the supplications that Jibril made was that may Allah Jalla wa ala, yeah, and he caused the person to be destroyed who allows the month of Ramadan to come in and to exit and the person doesn't take any advantage, doesn't take any benefit. So a person who's going to benefit by the tawfiq of Allah is the individual who's preparing for the month of Ramadan. You understand the one who is redeeming and rectifying themselves before the month of Ramadan actually enters. You understand? Not wait until the month of Ramadan come and then say, you know what, okay, I'm going to make myself better. No, they already made the necessary preparations. So tuba for that individual who does that. Um, we're going to talk about two things in this talk, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to talk about Ramadan and we're going to talk about Khiyam. And we don't want no one to get it confused that Ramadan does not mean fasting. Okay? Ramadan is a shahr min ash shahur. Okay? Ramadan is a month from amongst the month. Yani, okay? In the Hijri calendar. That's understood. Okay? Ramadan does not mean fasting. But this particular month have a status in Islam. 
and it has been elevated for a particular reason because something has been legislated within this month as something else tremendous happened within this month. As Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Inna anzawnahu fi laylatil qadr. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Indeed, we have revealed it. It here is referring back to the book of Allah, the Quran has been revealed in the night of decree. And this is important because Laylatul Qadr is in the month of Ramadan. Okay? Also Allah Jalla says, Inna anzawnahu fi Laylatul Mubaraka. And indeed we have revealed it, meaning the Quran again. Okay? We have revealed it, meaning the Quran again, uh, during a blessed night. This bless, blessed night was in the month of Ramadan. Inna kunna mundirin. Allah says, and indeed we are ever warning. Fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim. And therein, meaning in this blessed night, is decreed, all right, is decreed the matters. Yani every matter is decreed within this blessed night from Al Hakim, from Allah Jalla wa Ala, who's all wise. So we can see from here that the month of Ramadan. The status of this particular month is raised and elevated because it is the month wherein Allah Jalla wa Ala have sent down the uh, the revelation, meaning the Quran, not the entire Quran, but the revelation begin to come down during this month, and it was at night, not during the daytime, as Allah mentioned in both of those verses. Um, one is in Surah Al-Qadr, Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree, and then one is mentioned in Surah Al-Dukhan, which is the 44th chapter of the Quran. We see in those tremendous verses, so we see the status. Also in Surah Baqarah, Allah says, Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran, the month of Ramadan wherein the Quran was revealed. Again, so Ramadan, brothers and sisters, does not mean fasting, okay? Now, the relation and the status of Ramadan is because it was in it's the month where Allah Jalla wa Ala has revealed the Quran, has sent down revelation in that month. So that month took on a important role, important status. All right. Then Allah Jalla wa Ala, as Ibn um, Imam Qutrbi, he says that the word Ramadan it comes from Ramadan. Okay, Ramadan. Or Ramadan means something that is burning hot, something that is intensely burning, okay? That's, that's severe hot, right? And we know that Ramadan don't always fall in the uh, summertime, okay? But no doubt, it is hot, it's intensely hot. So even Kortabi says that in relation to the deeds of the individual, as far as the individual sins, can be burnt off or be purified by way of fasting. So in that regards, we can see that a person fasting within this month is seen as a purifier. It's burning away those um, those bad deeds, all right? It's burning away those bad deeds. So we here can see the significance of the month of Ramadan. But Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, does not mean fasting. I want to make that explicitly clear so that the beginner and we all are beginners to understand that that's not fasting. However, it is a month wherein fasting has been decreed and has been legislated from Allah Jalla wa Ala. As Allah subhanahu wa says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, khutiba alaykum usuyam, kama khutiba ala ladina min qablikum, la'alakum eh tattakun. Allah says, O you who believe, fasting has been decreed or prescribed for you as it has been prescribed for those who came before you. The Prophet sallallahu wa sallam, he mentioned about the advantage of Ramadan, idha ja'a, Shahr Ramadan, the Ja'a Ramadan, when the month of Ramadan comes, then he mentioned that the gates of paradise are open and the gates of the hellfire are closed and the shayateen are locked down. Okay? Sutifatu shayateen. The shayateen are put in chains. So we see the relativity connection to that. Now, and then we're going to be talking about fasting. So what is fasting? We're going to get into linguistic meaning because we have to understand words by their definition. Okay, and it's important that we understand the definition of it. Sometimes, uh, as we want to go into this talk, sometimes and oftentimes, if we don't properly understand something, we cannot properly give it its, uh, its due right. Okay, and that's why comprehension is so important because if you truly understood it, 
and the way that it's supposed to be understood, then you can give it its proper right and you can give it its due right and you can maximize the benefit from it. And many people, they see Ramadan as one thing, you know, in the month of Ramadan, we fast. Okay. So let's just fast. And they understand it from one perspective and they miss out on the major part of it. So it, it covers all of that. Once we get into the definition legislatively, you're going to see what Ramadan, what, what fasting actually entails. First and foremost, the Fuyam, it is the third pillar from the pillars of Islam. Islam has five pillars, okay? As the Prophet ﷺ says in a tremendous hadith, he says, Buniyat al-Islam ala khams. Islam is built upon five, okay? The ulama, they mentioned that these are the mubadi, okay? These are the foundational structures, okay, of Islam. It is based upon these five. And he mentioned, the Prophet ﷺ says in this tremendous hadith, Shahadat wa la ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, wa tuqeemu salat, wa tuqti al-zakaa, wa tasumu al-Ramadan. Okay? Tahajj al-Bayt. So the Prophet ﷺ says that it is to the five things he mentioned, the shahada, and then after the shahada, he mentioned to establish the salat, then after the salat, he mentioned to what? To fast, during the month of Ramadan. So it is the third pillar of Islam. And we know that a pillar, brothers and sisters, is what? It is those outward actions which are obligatory. It's an obligation, all right? Not a communal obligation. It's an individual obligation upon each and every one of us right, to believe and to act off the five pillars and there are two pillars which are circumstantial, meaning, in other words, they have certain conditions with them to be fulfilled, such as the pillar of sadaqah and the pillar of hajj. Because sadaqah, yani meaning um, zakat, actually, zakat is that which requires one to have some form of wealth, and it must be of a certain amount, okay? For wealth, okay? So, and then the condition with Hajj is that one must be physically capable, physically able, physically capable, as well as financially, okay? So, there are those conditions. And also, Hajj, meaning that a person is physically capable or able or have the financial at that time, then making Hajj once in their lifetime is sufficient, okay? It's sufficient for the one who is able. All right, so they are the conditions that's connected to it. But nonetheless, it is the third pillar of Islam, okay? Fasting. Not Ramadan. Ramadan is not a pillar from Islam, okay? So don't say Ramadan. They don't come in the hadith that Ramadan is from amongst the pillars. No, Suyam, fasting is. Also, Allah Jalla wa Ala has obligated it uh, upon this ummah, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he has obligated upon previous ummah, Previous nations was also, uh, fasting was prescribed for them. Now, it might not have been in the month of Ramadan, all right, because the legislation for them was different. It might not have been the same month, but nonetheless, fasting was something that was prescribed for the previous nations, as Allah has informed us in that verse that we quoted earlier, Ya yuhaladina amanu, O you who believe, kutiba alaykum usiyam, fasting has been prescribed for you, kama kutiba aladina min qablikum, as it's been prescribed for those who came before you. That's the shahid as it has been prescribed for those who came before you. In other words, the previous nations. Okay? And we'll save that last part of the ayat, uh, which is very important to understanding fasting. Because the end of that verse gives us the hikmah for why fasting has been decreed and prescribed. Okay? The end of that verse. That's supposed to be the objective and goal of fasting. And sometimes we don't, uh, fast and come out with that Including myself Sometimes when we fast We don't achieve that We don't reach that objective And it's, it's, it's multiple reasons why But we have to understand that um, What can it for, uh, Also Fasting has been obligated In the second year of the Hijra Okay, to understand the Hijri calendar, then it is dated from the time that the Prophet ﷺ made the Hijra. He migrated, okay? When the Prophet ﷺ migrated from where? From Mecca to Medina, all right? This dates the calendar for the Muslims. Unlike the Jordanian calendar, 
which uh, a lot of the Christians and you know use that calendar because they date it in regards to Christ or BC, you know, or they mentioned AD. These terms of dating it, so it doesn't go by the actual calendar of the the Hijri calendar, which is important for us to understand the Hijri calendar because the Ibadat, the acts of worship, are surrounded around the Hijri calendar. Okay, like fasting, like Hajj, like Umrah, all of them are connected to the Hijri calendar, like Idda. <laughs> when someone gets a divorce and they are placed into this state of Idda, it is by the Hijri calendar, not by the Draganian calendar. All right, something that we must understand. Acts of Ibadat are connected and associated with the Hijri calendar, brothers and sisters, not the Draganian calendar. Understand the significance of that. Tayyip, um, and this, the Prophet وسلم, is reported and authentically sound that he fasted nine Ramadans. So for nine Ramadans, meaning the month of Ramadan, the Prophet وسلم, fasted for nine of them throughout his lifetime. Okay? He fasted nine of them. Uh, then Allah Jalla wa Ala decreed that the Prophet وسلم, was to pass away. Fasting linguistically, in the Arabic language, the word fasting means al-imsak. Al-imsak. What is al-imsak? Al-imsak is to refrain, okay? To withhold, to restrain, okay? Refrain yourself from something. Withhold yourself from something, all right? Imsak and kalam like a person refraining himself from speaking, withholding himself from not speaking. Al-imsak and al mashi or a person refraining himself from not walking, Meaning they're not walking, right? They're standing. As far as the definition linguistically uh, for fasting being refraining from speech, then we find this in the ayat that Allah Jalla wa'ala mentioned about Maryam in Surah Maryam, uh, the mother of Isa alayhi salatu salam, when she said, Inni nadaratu lil Rahman, she says to Jibril, she says to the angel, Inni nadaratu lil Rahmani soma. Here she mentions soma. Okay, soma is fasting, brothers and sisters. That's the name for fast. In Arabic, is soma. Okay, she says, Inni, indeed I, nadaratu, have taken a vow, lil Rahman, with al Rahman, meaning Allah Jalla wa Ala. She tells the angel, I have taken a vow with al Rahman, the most merciful, Salman, to fast. What fasting is she talking about here? Because later on, Allah Jalla wa Ala tells her and, and, and reminds her, as the angel have uh, mentioned to her, for her to shake the tree so that the food can come down, <laughs> right? The fruit can come down so that she can eat, right? So it's not talking about refraining from food. Nor drink. So what fasting here means is amsak anil kalam. All right? And she mentions at the end. She says, Falan yawma in siya. Meaning that I will not speak to any man. Okay? I have vowed to Ar Rahman to fast. And here she means by fasting by not speaking to any man. I will not speak to any man, I will refrain from speaking. So this is the linguistic meaning of fast, okay? To refrain, refrain from walking, refrain from talking, etc., etc. So I hope we understand that. That's clear? Wall there, no. All right? Now, the legislative meaning. And when we say legislative, I want you to think of Allah and His Messenger. How do Allah Jalla wa Ala defines fasting? And how does the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Sunnah defines fasting? So when we say the legislative meaning, we mean what Allah and His Messenger intend or defined uh, fasting to be. Okay? Uh, it means to refrain. Now, I want you to understand that most of the times you're going to find that the linguistic meaning also is incorporated within the legislative meaning. It doesn't go against that. Oftentimes you will find, okay, like in this case, it's still a reframing taking place, all right, because it's still an MSAC. But it's an MSAC with the intention from refraining from those things which all right, will invalidate those things which you're supposed to refrain from breaking your fast with, whether it is tangible or intangible, whether it is physically or, or, or spiritually, uh, from the 
it's a certain time period from the rising of the second dawn, right, to the setting of the sun, okay? So for us to understand this definition is basically understanding that there are three things taking place. One is a Nia, okay? It is a Nia. Um, you might find uh, in some definitions they mention to Abud Allah, okay, to worship Allah, what you're actually doing. So you're refraining with one thing in the legislative person name is one is what you have in the intention, okay? Because your intention when it comes to act they be bad that you must have an intention. Not when it comes to customary things, eating, drinking, wearing your clothes, etc., riding your car, etc., etc. You don't need an intention for that. But when it comes to acts of worship, you need an intention. And since fasting is an act of worship, especially that's legislative here, it is, you know, then you have to have an intention. So you have to have the intention to do what? All right. You have an intention to reframe from what? From those things which invalidates. They call them muftarat. Those things which, yani, that you're supposed to be staying from that would break your fast. All right? All right. Those things which would break your fast, you know such as eating, drinking, and having relations with your legal spouse, all right? These are some of the major ones, and there are other things as well, all right? And these are from the physical, but notice it also says ma'anawiyya. So also now, a part of the definition is that you're supposed to refrain from those things spiritually as well, such as backbiting, tail carrying, okay, insulting, fighting okay a lot of these different things obscene speech lying falls under ma'anawiyya okay that's a part of the definition so fasting is not just to fast legislatively it doesn't mean that you're fasting just with your body limbs oh I didn't eat I didn't drink and I didn't have relations all right so then that mean that I fast no a part of that is you didn't lie you didn't cheat you didn't steal, you didn't rob, you understand, hekada. You didn't backbite, you didn't, yes, all of that is a part of it. Do you understand? They go hand to hand. Do you understand? It's not the other way. And most of us, we focus only on the physical and we leave off the spiritual, which is why we don't taste and um, the, the maximal benefit, nor achieve what that end of the eye or the verse that we were talking about earlier is talking about as far as the wisdom behind fasting being legislated in the first place. So the second thing is, again, refraining from those things. We have the first part of this definition is intention. The second one is what? Refraining from those things which invalidates physically and spiritually. And then the third one is that is a time frame for this. So you're going to remain refraining from the physical as well as the spiritual, okay, things that we mentioned from the time that the rising of the, 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 the dawn, the true dawn, to the setting of the sun. That's your time frame. This is when you're going to be at your best, all right? This is also allowing us to see that in order for us to achieve being at our best, there are certain things, both physically as well as spiritually, that needs to take place for that uh, to happen. And sometimes we think being at our best is because we might have a, a fan, uh, uh, excellent idea or we might have done something or achieved something or we might have shown people this. That is aspects or things of that, but that's not the ultimate thing being at your best. So fast and teach you how to reach your highest potential. You understand? Being the best version of yourself because you will have to refrain from eating, drinking. Yes, because eating plays a direct role on our thinking. It plays a direct role on our health. It plays a direct role on whether or not we're going to be energetic or whether or not we're going to be lazy. Yes, <laughs> it has a bearing on all of that. Okay, so you have to understand eating. Also, eating, drinking plays a direct role in regards to our desires for our sexual pleasure. All of those things, okay, you have to understand, they're all connected. You can go to the prophetic medicine, you can go to, we did a series on the uh, mental health, the grateful course, where we talked about eating and all these different things from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Sunnah, explaining Ibn Qayyim going into, delving into deep for us to understand these things and a better perspective. All of those things play a part. So to reach your full potential, you will have to come off the physical plane a little bit. 
You will have to refrain yourself from a lot of the things that you take pleasure in within the physical so that you can free your spirit, all right, to see things clearer. Do you understand? So you can get a better picture of things. You're not just thinking animalistic, but you're thinking more actually on a spiritual sense, even though you're in a physical experience, all right? So also a part of that is freeing up the spirit from different things because a lot of stuff that happened to us actually affects us. All right, what we eat, what we drink, we see that affects us. How we think affects us, okay? If we're prone to giving into lying, that affects us. If we're prone to uh, negative speech or negative thoughts, it affects us. If we're prone to backbiting and tail carrying, it affects us. So you have to see the wisdom behind fasting because it's making you, it's a benefit for you to become better, you see? So that's the point of it. All right. And it's pitting you with discipline. It's giving you a time to realize that from this time period to this time period, you can discipline yourself. And this can be a gauge for those of our fellas and our sisters who are fighting addictions. Uh, this can be a gauge for those who are uh, uh, people who are trying to learn to be more disciplined within their lives and their lives. Just like the Salat. The Salat serves as a gauge as well. Being disciplined, you can learn from Salat. You can also learn from fasting. Why? Because there is a set time limit where you are restricted so that you have to adhere to that time limit. And if you can uh, place yourself under that strict discipline, then you are what? You're disciplining yourself. You're learning discipline. You're learning how to be patient. You're learning how to carry out certain things. So you're developing yourself. All right. This is what it's actually teaching you. So if you can stop from this dawn to the What's the name? Then what makes you think you can't stop? Period. If you can stop, and you're doing this for 30 days, all right? You're doing this for 30 days, sometimes 29, but you're doing this from 29 to 30 days, right? This is what you're doing. You're stopping yourself. You're training yourself. You, you understand? And you're becoming better. So if you can do that for those 30 days or those 29 days, then that means you can do it throughout the year. You have proven to yourself that you can behave and be on your best behavior throughout the year. So now let's go back into rush respect to the statement that we brought from Ibn Rajab, right? Tuba liman aslaha nafsahu qabla Ramadan. Tuba is for the individual who does what? Who rectifies themselves before the month of Ramadan. Wakaifa liman fi? Wakaifa fi? How about the person who's reached the month of Ramadan? How about the person who was in the month of Ramadan? What about their rectification? If you didn't rectify yourself before, it's going to be an uh, it's going to be an indication that you may not rectify yourself during Ramadan. You see, again, same thing with salat. How well you perform wudu is how well your prayer is going to be, and people don't really make that connection. <laughs> people don't make that connection. If you offer the wudu, right? Even though the wudu is a condition, by the way. And without wudu, the salat is not accepted. We already know that. But if you offer the wudu fast, hasty, didn't really take your time, you didn't perfect it, your salat ain't going to be better. You won't find an individual who, <laughs> who did not perform the wudu well making the salat well. That don't go hand in hand. So if you find an individual making the wudu well, then their salat will be well. But if you find an individual being neglectful in regards to the wudu, their salat is not going to be better. All right, that's the same thing we have to understand. If you're finding yourself making the preparation necessary before entering the month of Ramadan, then during the month of Ramadan, you will get some benefit. But if you didn't prepare yourself before Ramadan, you can't really expect that you're going to get a lot of benefit in the month of Ramadan. Do you understand? It's all in that preparation. It's all in that mindset. So we have to understand these important things. The Sheikh continues. He says, Emma in Msek Bidunaniya, Fahadalai Yusama Suyam and Shara'an. إذا لم يأكل ولم يشرب بدون النية يسمى الصيام لغة لا شرعا. So now the Sheikh has given us a beautiful benefit here. He wants us to know that if we refrain without having the intention associated with it, if the intention is void or absent, all right, within the fasting, then it is not known as fasting legislatively, okay? Even if the person doesn't eat nor drink, okay, 
If the person doesn't have the intention associated with it, then it is not known to be fasting legislatively. It will be known as fasting linguistically. Okay? That person has not fast legislatively. And legislatively is the fast that counts. All right? Henceforth, the man came in the masjid and he offered the salat. And he finished the salat, he salamed, and he gave the Prophet ﷺ the salam, and the Prophet ﷺ returned to salam and told him to go back because you haven't prayed. The man did it again, the Prophet told him to go back, you haven't prayed. The man did it again, the Prophet told him to go back and pray. Pay attention to how everything is connected. The man prayed three times, this companion, right? And each time he prayed, <laughs> the Prophet ﷺ told him, he says, he says, he says, he says for you have not prayed. So what was I doing? The three different times that I just, I was physically moving, I wasn't praying. So imagine how many people who fast linguistically. How many people who fast according to just the language. They don't eat, they don't drink, you know, they don't, d -d 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 for a certain time. But they're not even fasting legislatively. That's major. So for 30 days, you just been fasting linguistically. In other words, your fast have not been accepted. You see? Do you see that? Amilatun suiba. All right, this is why you found the statement of uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab when he came across the Rahib, the monk, and the man was so devoted in his act of worship that Umar ibn al-Khattab, he saw the Rahib, and he saw the Rahib, the monk, worshiping, and he, re he quoted the verse in Surah Al-Ghashiyah, the 87th chapter of the Quran, uh, well, the 88th chapter of the Quran. He quoted the verse where Allah says, Amilatun and he started to cry. And he said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, لماذا تبكي? Why are you crying? Oh, oh, commander of the faithful. Why are you crying? He's crying because he says that this man, this monk, even how devoted he is in his worship, he reminds me of the verse where Allah says, عَامِلَةٌ That a person is laboring hard, vigorously, but is no benefit. All of his work with no benefit. So you fast on the month of Ramadan, but you don't fast legislatively. <laughs> that was all of that unnecessary work that you don't benefit from. See the connection? You don't benefit from it. So this is what Sheikh Fuzan is saying. He said an individual who does not fast with the knee yet now, with the intention, then this person only fasts linguistically and not legislatively. And then the Sheikh doesn't say this from himself. He quotes the verse, the hadith of the Prophet Sallam, This hadith is collected by Bukhari and also Muslim from the hadith of Umar ibn, uh, Umar ibn al Khattab, which is a gharib hadith. The Prophet Sallam said, Actions will be judged by intentions. Here, actions are talking about acts of worship. And fasting is an act of worship. And each person would get that what he and she attended. So from this hadith, we can see that an individual who does not fast with the proper uh, intentions associated with it, then is not considered that. Henceforth, the Prophet ﷺ gives us a, a, a similitude when he talks about in this hadith about the hijrah, the hijrah that will be rewarded, the hijrah that will be accepted versus the hijrah that won't be accepted. Do you understand? And notice how the Prophet ﷺ mentioned for men, uh, he says He says whoever migration is for the sake of Allah Notice his intention is in couple with it Then his migration is for that So you, you, you see that connection you have in that niyyah This is the point that Sheikh Fuzan is trying to stress And this is the point that we need to understand When I mentioned in the beginning We have to understand things in their proper context because if we don't properly understand it, then the whole time you've been fasting, you could have probably fast seven Ramadans. <laughs> and if you go back to the definition, you say, well, hold on. Was I fasting linguistically? Was I fasting legislatively? You know, well, how was I fasting? You know, did, did I fast both spiritually as well as, did I have the intention, the understanding of all these different things? So that's why it's important to understand the definition so that we make sure that we are getting the benefit that we need and that the fasting is being accepted. All right, Tayyip, so the Sheikh, he calls on, he says, he says, فَلَوْ أَنَّ إِنْسَانَ لَمْ يَأْكُلْ وَلَا يَشْرَبْ وَلَا يَعْمَلْ أَيُّ شَيْءٍ مِنَ مُفْتَرَاتِ مِنْ طُلُوعِ الْفَجْرِ الثَّانِي إِلَى غُرُوبِ الشَّمْسِ وَلَكِنَّهُ لَا يَمْوِ الصِّيَامِ هَذَا لَا يَعْتَبْرِ صَائِمًا شَرْعًا وَلَيْسَ لَهُ أَجْرٌ فِي هَذَا وَنْ كَانَ يُسَمَّ صَائِمًا فِي اللُّغَةِ So the Sheikh, he, he, he says that 
even if a person was not to eat nor drink, right? And he doesn't do any of those acts that comes for those things that invalidate, such as he doesn't have in sexual relationships. He doesn't do any of those things during that time period of the second dawn to the setting of the sun. He says, if the person does not, however, the person does not intend to fast for the sake of Allah or to worship Allah, he doesn't intend, he doesn't have the intention there. He says, and then this fast of his would not be considered to be a legislative fast and he would not get the reward concerning this. He says, even if it is known as he's fasting linguistically, meaning according to the uh, Arabic language. أو معنوية هناك مفترات معنوية مثل غيبة والنميمة والشط وقول الزور وكلام قبيح وفعل محرم من من النظر إلى ما حرم الله والاستماع إلى ما حرم الله فإنها مفترات معنوية لأنها تنقص أجر صائم أو لا يكون له أجر معها قد تستقرق أجره فلا يكون له أجر ولهذا يقول. So then the Sheikh goes on to tell us to understand that there are two types of fasting here. That's taking place all right there is the physical fast and we know about those physical fasts such as refraining from the eating the drinking and the sexual relations that's the physical fast right and then we have the spiritual fast such as refraining from the tail carrying the backbiting and the, you know the, the, the obscene speech the, uh, giving false testimony the lying etc etc so the, the, the sheikh is telling us that there is a difference between both of them okay there's a difference between both of them, right? Looking at those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deems to be impermissible or um, listening to those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deems to be permissible. And then the shaykh, he says something very important. He says that if a person was to do that, right, then what it does when he does those things that spiritually, it takes and diminish from the reward of the fast itself. Now, it might don't invalidate the fast, okay? I want you to understand, understand this. It might don't invalidate the fast totally, meaning doesn't you're not fasting at all because you might have lied while you were fasting, or you might have cursed while you were fasting, or you might have did such and such while you were fasting, backbite or etc. It doesn't invalidate the fast, but it diminishes the reward of the fast. All right, where the person doesn't get the maximum benefit of the actual fasting. So the Sheikh says. It takes away from the reward of the fast, the one who's fasting. Or uh, the person doesn't get a reward associated with it. For this reason, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, uh, in an authenticated narration, the Prophet ﷺ says, This is collected by Imam Bukhari and his Sahib. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever does not leave off uh, lying, Okay, and doing and, and acting, uh, acting off those lies or doing actions like that or behaving foolishly and ignorantly, then Allah is not in need of this person leaving off their food and drink. So you see the connection here? <laughs> Allah don't need you to not eat and not drink. He provided you with food <laughs> and drink. That's not the purpose of it. All right, so you just going hungry and not eating and not drinking, that's not the purpose why Allah Jalla told you to do that. You are forgiven. You are doing something which is called a sacrifice that you're not realizing that's taking place here. You are willing to sacrifice your desires and place that of Allah Jalla wa ala, before those desires. It's tremendous. It's as if you're doing something like Ibrahim was ordered to do with his son. Look at the magnitude of that. Ibrahim was ordered to slaughter his son. You know, sacrifice his son, Ishmael. Right? And Allah Jalla Allah sent down a calf, you know, but he was testing Ibrahim and, and Ishmael both. And Ishmael says, Does do what your Lord Jalla Allah commands you. And indeed you will find me patient. Okay. So his son was actually willing. They both was willing to go through with the act. And that's what Allah was testing. Allah didn't want him to physically do it. So he sent down something else in it. But it shows that he was willing to place, you understand? The love of Allah, the obedience of Allah over that which he desires, such as his son. From his family He was willing to do that And that's a glimpse of Islam Of Islam That's a glimpse of surrender That's what it means to be a servant You understand? Taking the pleasure that we have And putting it to the side And placing the love of Allah And the obedience of Allah Over that pleasure That's a form of Islam <laughs> That's what you're looking at so that's what Allah Jalla is wanting you to do He wants you to give up your eating And your drinking Because this is something that you desire Okay, he wants you to give it up for his sake. 
This is why the reward for fasting is only that Allah reward that person, as it comes in the Hadith Qudsi. That he gave up, he refrained from eating, he refrained from drinking, he refrained from sex relation, all for my sake, li ajli, or min, min ajli, for my sake. So Allah Jalla Allah has a reward that, uh, for the people who fast. So you're making that sacrifice, you're becoming a servant. You're learning what it is to be a servant through fasting. You see that? You're learning what it means to be an abd. Being an abd is giving up your desires and putting that of Allah Jalla before you. How often do we get that? We get 30 days. We get a 30 days or 29 day school to teach us how to do that. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Do you understand that? That's why the deen is perfect. You see? Throughout the whole year, you know, the 11th months, that we out here running to and fro, back and forth, this, this, and that. Sometimes we get it right, sometimes we get it wrong. Crazy, right? And then we go into this disciplined school that teaches us how to become servants all over again. <laughs> now you see the importance of making the dua that the Salaf will make. Allahumma balikna Ramadan. Oh Allah, allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. <laughs> they understood the significance of it. We need that spiritual cleaning. We need that physical cleaning. We need that character building, that development. We need it from when we was out here during the month. So that training takes place to remind them again of how to be in the service of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Allahu Akbar. And henceforth you find the self making statements. If it was anything that the people in the qabr and the grave was to wish, la tamawna eh. They will wish that they would come back to fast in the month of Ramadan. One day, if they were in the grave and they could have anything they wish, they would come back to fast in the month of Ramadan. All right? Too many benefits con connected to the month of Ramadan. So look at Ramadan in that way. I know the Salah is coming in. We're getting ready to stop. <clears throat> Sheikh Fuzan continues. He says, Laysu Suyam. He says, Bring another hadith, the hadith of the Prophet. When he says, لَيْسَ الصِّيَامُ مِنَ أَقْلِ وَشُرْبِ وَإِنَّمَا الصِّيَامُ مِنَ اللَّغْوِ وَرَفَثِ أَقْرَجُ الْأَلْحَاكِمْ وَالصَّحَّحَهُ بِحَاقِ From the hadith of Abu Hurairah. So in this hadith, uh, which is um, reported by Al-Hakim in his Mustadrak, as well as um, Al-Imam Bihaqi, he authenticated this hadith from on the authority of Abu Hurairah, that the Prophet ﷺ said, fasting is not uh, refraining from eating and drinking. But it's only refraining from low, vain speech, um, uh, obscene behavior. So in other words, there is a character development taking place here. The Prophet ﷺ is reminding us with both of these hadith that the purpose is not just physical. It's not just physical. You give bad dawah. You give bad dawah. Your non-Muslim relatives ask you a question about the benefits of Ramadan and you're telling them all about how we're trying to relate to the poor because we don't eat and we drink. Bad dawah. It's not the purpose of it. It's not just to relate to the poor because we don't eat and we drink. Yes, we can somehow see the significance of not having food and the beauty of having it and those things. We're not negating that. But that's not the benefit of Ramadan. That's not the benefit of fasting in the month of Ramadan. That's not the benefit. What is the hikmah? What is the wisdom? Allah tells you. لَعَلَّكُمْ a تَتَّقُونَ I want to be pious. How do I become pious? Be obedient. I want to be pious. What do I do to become from the mutakun? Be obedient. Be an abd. Be a servant. That's it. You understand? That's it. That's the simple math to being, obe to being pious. I want to be pious. Be obedient. Be a servant. That's what the law is telling you. So that's the purpose behind fasting. <laughs> So that you can gain that taqwa. So that you can have that necessary taqwa that you need. So that you can be a servant. That's what you're doing. You're going through all of this to show you how to be a proper servant to Allah. Right? I desire food. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refrain from my food. Because I love Allah. You know what I'm saying? Right? I know I like to watch this. I like to do this. I like to talk this. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to behave like that. I'm not going to be doing that because I love Allah. You, you see? So you see that connection, that growing within the month of Ramadan. And we have to learn, inshallah ta'ala, the importance of this because we don't always get the chance to reach the next Ramadan. We don't always get the chance. You understand? 
So we have to make each time that we arrived in this mo- this month, if we've reached this month, we have to think that no, we have to make it better than all of the previous months that we have, that we have to make it better. And this is why you can understand Ibn al-Rajab's statement. Tuba liman aslaha nafsahu qabla Ramadan. It's people right now. Wallahi tallahi ballahi. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, 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 to shield them with his mercy. It is people right now who is going to be alive on the month of Ramadan and won't benefit. They're not even preparing for Ramadan. Right now. Not even preparing for Ramadan. So caught up with the dunya. So caught up with everything. The desires and everything. So caught up. Because you have to understand something. You're going to be a servant. But to whom? That's period. Everyone in life is a servant. Do you not understand? It's already understood that everyone, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, is a servant of Allah. But everyone in life is a servant. You're in servitude. Whether you understand it or not, you serve your children. You're a slave to them. You serve your wife. You're a slave to her. She serves you. She's a slave to you. You're a servant of your job. You serve your employers. You're a slave to them. Do you not get it? Everyone is in servitude of something. So it's either you're going to be a servant to the creator or you're going to be a servant to the created. You understand? So it's either you are bowing down in service to your desires or you're bowing down in service to Allah. And this is why you see Allah Jalla mention it. You understand who you're going to be a servant to. And that's why we have to understand the importance of that. We are commanded to be ibad Allah, servants of Allah Jalla wa'ala. So we have to fight against our nafs. We have to strive against our nafs so that our nafs will not make us become servants to that. As Allah Jalla wa'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ Whoever transgresses beyond the set limits of Allah has indeed oppresses his or her own self. Allah Jalla wa'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَّكِ اللَّهَ يَخْرَجُهُ Allah says, whoever fears Allah, now taqwa again, right? whoever fears Allah, جل, he will make a way for that individual without, without any difficulty. There is no one on the face of the earth who obeyed Allah, who is a servant of Allah, except that the difficulty was a way out from it. They didn't remain permanently in that difficulty. Allah says how? Because Allah says, فَإِنَّ فَإِنَّ مَعَ عُسْرِ يُسْرَى And He said it twice. Indeed, every hardship, there are two reliefs. It is not possible that a believer who is a servant to Allah and he fears Allah and obeys Allah, that he remains under that difficulty. It's not possible. So Allah says we're going to make a way out. There is a door that will be open for you. It's a way out. And then Allah continues and he says, وَيَرْزُقُ And we will provide for you from means which you could never imagine. In other words, you didn't see it coming from that way, but Allah gave it to you. You didn't watch it coming that way, but Allah gave it to you. Showing you again, you weren't in control in the first place. It was Allah who was in control. But you thought you was in control, but you weren't. Do you see? So it's connections with those things. We have to understand that. Fighting against ourselves. We ask Allah Jalla wa'ala to make us those individuals who take advantage of this blessing that Allah Jalla wa'ala has given us. And it's a tremendous blessing because we sin night and day. All right? We sin night and day. All of us, man, including me. We sin night and day. We do things that are wrong. Night and day that we tarnish our soul. We imprison our soul. We need the month of Ramadan. Do you understand that? We need it. And we need it to lift us up. So we have to ask Allah Jalla wa'ala to allow us to reach that month. And to allow us to rectify ourselves. And so that we can come in this month of Ramadan. This will be continued inshaAllah ta'ala. Because I would like to continue this to go over. But we'll stop here. This will be continued. We'll finish the words of the Sheikh going into Ramadan and anything like that. If you want to share this, share this for those people who don't understand the preliminaries of Ramadan. They can learn about it. And they can also learn about fasting. Whatever we said that was incorrect uh, in our translation today was definitely from Ashad al-Shaytan. Whatever said was correct is from Allah Jalla wa'ala. Subhanakallahum. Yuhamdi. أشهد أن أستقبل إليك جزاك الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله